Howdy y'all, this is Mad Max Track. Today we're going to be talking about the Bendix King LPH 5142A and specifically how to convert that radio into a simple tactical portable repeater system. There are a lot of people out there that say repeaters are expensive to you know maintain or build and I want to kind of dispel that myth because actually it's pretty simple. You just got to be able to find the hardware and that's actually not that hard. So uh, let's get on to the radio that is the base of this repeater. This is a uh, Bendex King LPH5142, written right here. This should work pretty much for any of the LPH series radios. Now these are ruggedized two-way VHF. I think out of the box they do 148 to 172. 16-channel wideband only radio, which is one of the reasons why they've kind of been phased out. And uh, however, they're really easy to downband to 144 to work on the amateur 2 meter band. You can find them as low as $10, sometimes you know, 20 or so, more typical, $20, $30 on eBay. They usually have some issues with them. As far as uh, the actual radio and its transmit transmitting and receive capabilities, they're pretty amazing. So you can actually hear it transmitting there. That's what that noise was, interference. One of the issues is there's really no display. It just says channel 5, channel 6, channel 7. That's kind of lame. You know, there's no alphanumeric. Uh, these little uh, transmit keypads fall apart pretty easily. This is uh, what one's supposed to look like. A little push-to-talk pad. And they usually fall apart and look something kind of like this after they've sat around collecting dust for a while. The good thing is, with uh, the repeater we're building here, you don't need to push the talk button. You do not need a display. You don't need uh, any of that stuff. So the stuff that normally fails and is just kind of the shortcomings of these radios doesn't matter. There's uh, the circuitry inside is wonderful. They they transmit and receive almost magic as far as HTs go. So uh, this is what the radio looks like by itself without the battery and. Uh, without the antenna. So it's got kind of a weird uh, stud mount that only Bendix King really uses. And uh, so you go, oh man, how am I supposed to get an antenna to plug in there? There's a 50 ohm output on the side that uses a regular eighth inch cable, like so. You can get these uh, places like Radio Shack, so they're really ubiquitous, easy to find. Plugs right in there, I got a piece of uh, RG58 and I connected it to regular UHF connector, so I put a turnaround on there. So you can attach this to any external antenna. So that's another thing that's really cool about these radios. So right here we have what looks like a 50 cal ammo can because that's what it used to be. If you notice there are antenna connectors on the back and some Anderson power pole connectors here on the front. That's for charging. When I built this repeater, it was actually for a hunting trip I went on in the fall up in Northern California, and we had about an 1,800 acre ranch that we wanted to have communications across. If someone's down in a hole back behind a ridge somewhere, they're not going to be cut off. And so with these radios set as two watts, this repeater worked wonderfully. So let's take a look inside. So here we go. You'll notice there are two... Bendix King radios in here that have been mounted to the side. There's a lead acid gel cell. But you'll notice there are two uh, quarter inch or eighth inch connectors that just go right to the uh, antenna connectors on the outside chassis. And uh, you basically turn the radios on. You can set what channel they're on. There are points that you can access. I'll link to it in the comment section uh, where you can find plans on how to build these. I just wanted to kind of have some way of illustrating it so people could see it firsthand, uh, what it looked like. And basically, I uh, let me go back to my demo radio. I pulled this plate out here on the bottom and just uh, found where the actual battery connects in and uh, just wired in uh, plus and minus 12 volt and just hooked up an Anderson power pole type connector that goes right off the lead acid gel cell. So a lot of people go like, oh, well, you don't want to run 12 volts or even when it's charging up to 14 volts into a BK. Uh, these battery packs are only about 10 and a half volts. 
and I say no that's that's simply not true they can handle more than that if anyone's ever used a Bendix King radio they know about the clamshell the alkaline packs which take nine double a batteries and just wanted another myth I wanted to spell real quick here's a multimeter here's a, a Rayovac double a battery and let's see what kind of voltage we're getting out of this there we go 1.59 volts one you guys see that 0.59 and the uh, alkaline pack clamshell that takes nine batteries oh look that's 14.31 volts well over the uh, 10 and a half volts or so that this battery puts out but that's what you're going to get with a typical BK clamshell so that's well within the specs of running a uh, lead acid gel cell like I said you uh, you bust this guy open you basically pull the screws out there 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 thing pulls apart you of course want to be careful I figure uh, if you're going to undertake something like this you know a little bit about electronics at least know how to solder know how to do some simple stuff if you know basic electronics if you've built cables before if you're I would say to what a typical hobbyist or amateur operator level electronics know-how anyways some radios have this little plate on the back a little Lexan uh, jobby that basically covers up this plate this the whole reason is this gets warm when you transmit and so I guess when you're holding it and operating, you uh, don't want your hand to get hot. So uh, sometimes you'll have to remove that. But it doesn't matter because most radios I've found, especially the LPHs you find on eBay, uh, they don't have that plate. But that's fine. You do not need it because you'll notice here what I did was I used these two holes as mounting points to actually attach the radio to the box. I also used some 3M, you know, double-sided tape. I think I got it at the dollar store. You, I'm sure you can find it at Walmart or uh, went to Berg Hardware in Pasadena, which is a local uh, hardware store. Shout out to them. Huge shout out and uh, use these right here uh, to actually mount the radio and the 3M tape to kind of hold it in place. So if, like I said, I was gonna take this up to Northern California, I'm gonna throw it around, I want it to be able to fall down a hill and not damage the radio. So like I said, I'll link to, they should be down below, the uh, plans for how where you actually wire in what. It's I think three wires um, to harness these together. So boom, you have transmit and receive and you don't need a control module which is great, which is one of the things that's, that's difficult. Now, that will, does mean the repeater will not ID, it will not, you know, hold and have a courtesy tone. It won't say, like, you are listening to the K, blah, 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 repeater. It won't do anything fancy like that, but you'll have a functioning repeater. And this, I have it set to where they are on low power. That's my transmit radio. So this is only transmitting about 2 watts, and these worked. We were getting these about 2 miles away on our hunting trip. So let me jump ahead to uh, some of the downbanding stuff. There's another... A video I'm going to link to on YouTube that just goes over how to downband these radios for two meter amateur operation. What you will need to buy, and this is going to be kind of expensive, this is the programming cable. This is actually a Bendix King Lima Alpha Alpha 0725 cable. These are kind of expensive. You can get them on eBay. This will do any Bendix King radio. So, since I'm, of course, a BK fan, I already have one of these. There we go. And that's how you program it. You use a software in DOS LMR. .exe. You can Google around for it. It's not hard to find. If, if you can't find it on the internet, then you probably should not be undertaking this uh, effort. What does it cost to build this thing? Ammo can, 50 cal ammo can. If you don't already have one, you can probably buy one of these for uh, $10 at the local Army Surplus store. Some simple antenna connectors. I got these, I think, at the TRW swap meet. I think they're about $2 a piece. Uh, cable connectors, Radio Shack. Uh, I think I got these at the electronic store. I think... Uh, Marvac or whatever they call it now in Pasadena. This is just a simple fuse to protect from the charging side. And this one comes to the actual radio. As you can see right here, they're I actually can't see it because my angle's bad. But they're connected by a Anderson power pole. So probably all the wires and connectors, and I think this little um, Anderson power pole connector, this is probably like 10 bucks also at Marvac. Um, so I mean, probably just connectors and stuff is probably about, about $15, $20. And... Uh, the actual radios, it should be 10 to $20 off eBay. So you get two of these. Of course, you need antennas, so you can build J-pole antennas, which are really inexpensive. They're probably 10 bucks worth of parts at Home Depot. You can build two of those, or you can run a duplexer on these. But I decided since I had real estate, I would just get two regular J-poles, put them up on a hill, separate them. J-poles are simple to build. There's plans all over the internet. You've probably, If you're watching this video, you've probably built one before. This should be pretty much everything you need to build one of these. Also, put some got some desiccant and stuff to put in there. Seal these all with RTV, and this is stuff that costs like, you know, nickels and cents. So altogether, 
with the radios, the ammo can, all that stuff, you're talking a hundred dollars maybe. And uh, oh, the other thing comes down to charging. How do you charge this thing? Uh, what I did is I got a. Uh, this is another expense. It's going to be a five watt solar panel. They sell at Harbor Freight. You can get it online. If you got a Harbor Freight store around you, if you live in SoCal like I do, they're kind of everywhere. I th I think I bought the thing like five years ago for I don't know twenty bucks, thirty bucks maybe. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive, but uh, you can literally plug that, put an Anderson power pole connector on there, plug it straight in. You don't need a charge circuit since it's only five watts. It, yeah, it probably comes in kind of high, but the batteries can handle it. It's not going to fry. And uh, like I said, on this hunting trip, we, we ran about a week. Did all our comms running through here at 2 watts, 5 watt charge circuit. And one single, this is a, uh, a I think a 7 amp hour gel cell. And uh, yeah, it ran fine. Okay, so thanks for watching the video. Uh, this, is, this is it. This is my simple sub $100 2 meter repeater. Like I said, they're real easy to build. They're fun to build. You just got to find the info, which I'll link below, and go gather all the stuff that you don't have that you need. And it's all stuff that's real easy to find. Almost any amateur with any uh, experience doing electronics will be able to build one of these and uh, go put it on top of one of your local mountains or maybe on top of your uh, peak and just make sure you don't interfere with any other repeaters out there. Or, and... Uh, you can have some fun. That's what Amateur Radio is all about. It's about having fun. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. And uh, check out my webpage, ladisastercoms.com. And it's got more info on uh, all sorts of radio stuff and different things. So, thanks for watching. And this is Mad Max Trek. I'll see you next time.